Mount Atake, at a height of 3,000 meters, is one of the most visited mountains of the Nagano Prefecture in Japan. Starting in 1979, the volcano was considered extinct, and in 2014, when an eruption began on the slopes, more than 300 people were climbing. 60 were able to get down quickly, and the rest sought refugee. However, one of the stranded hikers was a 59-year-old construction worker, Izumi Noguchi. He took about 100 pictures to show his wife later, as she had been unable to keep him company. Like 56 other tourists, Noguchi was killed when he was covered in a plume of gas and stones. His camera was destroyed, but the memory card survived. These were amongst some of his last images. Leading Life magazine photo correspondent Paul Schutzer arrived in Israel in June of 1967. On June 5th, Schutzer was in an armored truck with Israeli soldiers. One second before the car was hit by a bazooka shell, Schutzer was fatally shot in the head. His body and camera, which contained his final images, were found on the battlefield the next day. This is the last image of racing driver John Cobb. On September 29, 1952, he was killed at the age of 52 while attempting to break the world water speed record at Loch Ness while piloting his Crusader at a speed in excess of 200 miles per hour. During the run, the boat hit an unexplained wake in the water and disintegrated about Cobb. His body was thrown 50 yards beyond the wreckage. Daniel Shedd, 37, took a selfie with his university pals and texted it to his mom before they took off from an airport in Maryland Heights, Missouri. The cheerful photo was taken just moments before the four-seater, single-engine plane crashed in Illinois and killed them all. The selfie would be the last picture the good friends would ever take. Connor Cummings was a 20-year-old college student who fell to his death on December 30th, 2015, while scaling the roof of a midtown New York hotel. The aspiring photographer and his friend had reportedly taken the elevator to the top floor of a 52-story Four Seasons Hotel. They climbed 25 feet on a ladder to get a panoramic shot. The young photographer was capturing breathtaking shots when he fell to his death from the rooftop of the hotel. These were his incredible final images. Pacific Southwest Airlines Flight 182 was a Boeing 727 commercial airline that collided with a private Cessna 172 light aircraft over San Diego, California on Monday, September 25, 1978. Both aircraft crashed into North Park, a San Diego neighborhood. Flight 182 impacted just north of the intersection of Dwight and Nile killing all 135 people aboard the aircraft and seven people on the ground in houses, including two children. The Cessna impacted on Polk Avenue between 32nd Street and Iowa Street, killing the two aboard. Nine others on the ground were injured and 22 homes were destroyed or damaged by the impact and debris. These photos show Flight 182's final moments before its inevitable demise. David Johnston, a 30-year-old volcanologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, was swept away by the catastrophic eruption of Mount St. Helens 
on the morning of May 18, 1980. As one of the first members of the team to arrive at Mount St. Helens, Johnston spent long hours working on and close to the mountain. Ironically, he was caught at an observation post that was considered relatively safe. These photos were taken of Johnston on and around Mount St. Helens on May 17th, the day before the volcano erupted and killed him. David Johnston was not the only casualty of the Mount St. Helens eruption whose last moments were captured. When Mount St. Helens erupted on May 18, 1980, photographer Robert Landsberg was documenting the changes in the volcano from just a few miles away. Realizing that he couldn't possibly outrun the approaching ash cloud, he just kept shooting for as long as he could before using his body to preserve his film. Landberg's body was found 17 days later, buried in ash with his film intact. This is the last picture of former Thai Navy SEAL Saman Gunan, who died due to a lack of oxygen during cave rescue operations to save a soccer team of 12 boys that were trapped inside the Tham Luang cave. It is believed that Kunan was attempting to reach a cavern set up as a command center around 1.2 miles inside the flooded cave system when he ran out of oxygen. Gunan was returning to the center after placing oxygen tanks through the cave's underground network. His diving partner rapidly began efforts to revive him, but he was pronounced dead a short while later. John and Jackie Neal were killed moments after taking these dramatic shots of the Boxing Day tsunami. The Canadian couple, both 54, were on the shore of Thailand's Kaiolak when disaster struck in 2004. Deadly waves following an earthquake would claim up to 280,000 lives and cause mass devastation in 14 countries. The couple's smashed digital camera was washed up on a nearby beach, but the images were recovered from its memory card. This is a photo of Paul Browett with his daughters, Stephanie and Crystal Browett, in front of a crater lake on White Island, which is an active volcano and popular tourist attraction. The photo retrieved from Crystal's phone captures the moment the volcano's unexpected eruption began, alerting of the impending danger. Mere minutes after this photo was taken, the active volcano would erupt killing Stephanie, Paul, and 19 others. The photo retrieved from Crystal's phone captures the moment the eruption began, showing a white and gray cloud beginning to rise from the near crater lake. Bill Bigart was the only journalist casualty in the 9-11 tragedy of the collapse of the World Trade Center. He became a photographer very early in life, and on that day, he was carrying three cameras he had just bought. Bill was very bold when the first plane hit the World Trade Center. He said goodbye to his family, picked up his cameras, and walked the 20 blocks to the buildings on fire and began to take pictures of the devastated site even after the first tower had already collapsed. Big Art's last photo was taken at 10.28 a.m., around the same time the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed, killing Big Art. Big Art's body was found in the rubble four days later, along with his belongings, including his camera, which contained his final image.
When Brady Smeagol, 13, captured a blurry selfie with his idol, Kobe Bryant, on Saturday, January 25th, at the Mamba Sports Academy, he didn't know it would probably be one of the last photos of the NBA legend alive. Brian was at the Mamba Academy to coach his daughter Gianna's team, the Lady Mambas, who were competing in the Mamba Cup. Just a day after, Brian and Gianna would be killed in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California, along with seven other people. More than 70,000 people enjoy the art and music celebration at Burning Man in the Black Rock Desert every year. The nine-day event in Northern Nevada is climaxed with the burning of a towering 40-foot effigy made of wood. Attendees have tried to run into the flames as a symbol of rebirth, and in 2017, an attendee by the name of Aaron Joel Mitchell attempted to do the same as he rushed past security and ran into the flames of the blazing effigy. According to the county sheriff, rescuers had to pause an attempted rescue mission to allow the structure to fall before they could go back into the flames to extract Mitchell from the debris. Mitchell would succumb to his injuries at the UC Davis Hospital Burn Center in California the next morning. Photos captured Mitchell's final moments of running into the effigy with rescuers attempting to retrieve him. Specialist Hilda Ortiz Clayton was a U.S. Army combat photographer who was killed in July of 2013 when a motor accidentally exploded during an Afghan training exercise. Tragically, she captured the exact moment of the motor tube explosion that would leave her and four other Afghan soldiers dead. The image would be published in the May-June issue of Military Review, a journal of the Army. The article adds that Clayton's death symbolizes how female soldiers are increasingly exposed to hazardous situations in training and combat on par with their male counterparts. <laughs> 